the truth the girls. What if the best anti-aging treatments happen to be blood from a very young person? Could this be one of the elite's best kept and darkest secrets? Before I start this video, I want to say thank you for subscribing and don't forget to bell me and thank you for your support on Patreon. Hi everyone, Sonia here. When you're rich, you have access to the best of everything. The best clothes, the best cars, the best food, and the best anti-aging treatments. What if the best anti-aging treatments happen to be blood from a very young person? Would the rich elites of the world jump on the opportunity? And to what lengths would they have to go to get it? Have they already been doing this and for how long? It is indeed true that scientists have discovered that young blood has rejuvenating properties for the old. This was discovered by scientists who were experimenting with what is called parabiosis in mice. An old and a young mouse were turned into kind of Siamese twins. Their blood supplies were connected. The results, the old mice rejuvenated. Their circulatory systems, nervous systems, and even cognitive abilities improved. On the other hand, the young mice who received old blood started to develop problems associated with aging. Next, scientists decided to examine the effects of young blood transfusions on older humans. Enter PayPal founder Peter Thiel, who thought, well, why not turn this into a business? So Thiel started a research study to examine the effects of young blood from people aged 16 to 25 on older people aged 35 to 90. And they found that some of the effects of age-associated problems were decreased. When the study results seemed to show positive effects, he opened his services to the public and declared that for $8,000, anyone could participate in his research and receive 2.5 liters of young blood. Anyone could have access to young blood transfusions. He named his business Ambrosia, Ambrosia being the food of the gods, and really, for less than the price of a new car or a facelift, you too can have access to ambrosia. So have the elites of the world been doing this all along in the dark recesses of their palatial homes, away from the watchful eyes of the ethics boards? Well, let's look at some of the oldest, richest people. The queen mother lived to be 101. And she looked not too shabby at that ripe old age. So had she been defying the common life expectancy by engaging in a sort of vampirism? Her daughter, Queen Elizabeth, is getting up there too, and she looks pretty good too. Maybe the two of them have been doing it. But if they have, they apparently haven't been sharing their secret with the rest of the royal family, because most of them died at kind of normal ages of normal diseases. How about the world's oldest billionaire, David Rockefeller? I mean, look at this guy so old. He died in 2017, age 101. Was it the young blood that was keeping him going? Maybe yes, maybe no. After all, there are many centenarians and even super centenarians who are not so blessed in the financial department and they still live past 100, sometimes even 110. FYI, a study on centenarians once discovered that one in 300 people have the potential to live past 100, but only one in 6,000 actually do. And when they looked at what all these centenarians were doing to live so long, because some of them smoked, some of them didn't, some of them exercised, some of them didn't, some of them drank alcohol, some of them didn't. What did they all have in common? Most of them ate a lot of onions. Notice it wasn't garlic. Other notably senior elites include Zsa Zsa Gabor and Hugh Hefner. Maybe it was the paprika. Maybe it was the nookie. In the end, the only evidence we really have that anyone is experimenting with young blood transfusions to extend their lives is what we have access to right here from Ambrosia themselves. And like I said, it comes with the relatively low price tag of $8,000 a pop. On a side note, what I find interesting is the fact that old blood can make you age faster. Maybe it would be a good idea to bank a bit of your own blood in case one day you need a transfusion and you want to make sure that it didn't come from old man dithers. So people can speculate what rich people could be doing. Could they be taking people illicitly and harvesting their blood and doing transfusions? They could. Anybody could be doing anything. Sure, they could be doing that. Do you have the proof? Not so far. But you do have proof that someone's doing research on it. 
And you do have proof that if you can pay for it, you can be part of that research. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Thanks for giving me a thumbs up. Thanks for your support on Patreon. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time.